that's my fault. I w was looking at my watch. My watch is different than that one, so I guess I need to go look into that one. Good to see you this morning. Get your hymn books turned to page number 182. 182. Let's all stand and sing Wonderful Story of Love. 182. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wake the immortal string. Angels with rapture announce it, shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, what you believe. Wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love, though you are far away. story of love still he doth call today falling from Calvary's mountain down from the crystal bright fountain even from the dawn of creation wonderful story of love wonderful 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 story of love, wonderful story of love, Jesus provides the rest, wonderful story of love, for all the pure and blessed, rest in those mansions above us, with those who've gone on before us, singing the rapturous chorus, wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. Morning. morning. Well, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I appreciate you being here. I'm glad I was able to be here. And of course, we appreciate the presence of the Lord be here uh, this morning. Colossians 2.15 says, In heaven, a spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the Bible says that it's spoiled principalities and powers. Uh, and, of course, these refer to uh, the evil spirits, the demon spirits. To, uh, you know, the word demon's not in your King James Bible, but they're referred to as evil spirits, as to devils uh, and, and, and various places. And so uh, the Bible teaches us while Jesus was on earth, uh, he had power. By the way, he still does have power over them. Uh, and today in our Sunday school lesson, we're talking about him being triumphant or overcoming or defeating the demons. Uh, and, of course, you know, folks always ask down through your but Tony, they say, well, where demons come from? God made them. And Bob said he made everything that there is. Uh, now, listen, what is the purpose of that? You talk to God about it. I do find that, uh, you know, uh, that a lot of folks, and, and it's the scriptures lean to the fact that uh, they are fallen angels. Many of them are locked up, but some of them are still free. And, they're, and they do, they do indwell people. Are y'all okay? I mean, they do. And, of course, we see that, we see that uh, in Mark chapter number five, uh, where it, uh, 
of the man that was uh, the Lord cast out the legion of demons. Uh, and he was over in the tomb cutting himself and screaming and hollering and making a madman. Uh, and, of course, we know that uh, whenever they went out, they went into a herd of swine. Of course, you know, they, they, somebody said hogs, uh, so hogs wouldn't put up with, with what a man does. And so I guess that's pretty good theology. But anyway, it's good to see you this morning. Miss Fran, got a verse of scripture. All right. Yes, yes, yes. I have got a verse this morning. I'm going to have to watch it. I like this. You, oh, I know. It says, Come unto me, me and all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find my rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So be it. Amen. All right, Trey, go ahead. Amen. Uh, All right. Chris. Amen. Miss Marshall, do you have somebody? I saw, oh, back here. Go ahead, sir. Amen. Amen. All right. Isn't that great? All right. I'm sure that everybody, everybody knows a verse or at least part of the verse. Go ahead, Miss Yvonne. Amen. Jalen, that's a good verse. You know, you think about that verse of scripture. Uh, it's deceitful, desperately wicked. Only God can know the heart. I've heard folks say, well, if I know my heart, well, I don't know mine. Right. I'm glad, thank God, God does. Yeah. Amen. All right, anybody else? Right quickly, just before we go to class. Well, here's something everybody does. Let's give three praises. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may go.
<laughs> oh, they carried him away. you're able to stand, let's stand. We'll go to God in prayer. And I hope that you've already talked with the Lord today. You've already thanked Him for today. You know, Psalm said, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. And, uh, you know, I've said this often. I don't mind repeating myself. Uh, you know, God didn't make time for us. I mean, for Him. He made time for us. God's timeless. He's eternal. He's everlasting. Somebody said, how long is it everlasting? It's just everlasting. Right. I mean, that's all you say. I mean, it's, it, there's just no end. It's perpetual. It just goes on and on. And so he made time for us. And in that time, Brother Gary, he made us a day. And, uh, you know, Miss Prince talked about it. Uh, and uh, listen, it's of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. And the Bible said they're new when? Every morning. No, y'all, are y'all okay? It'd be hard if I just get a little excited. Oh, thank God. I mean, you, you think about this. Hey, whatever did God I had on my account yesterday, I used it up and start brand new again today. But anyway, listen, let's, uh, let's, let's go to God in prayer. And I'm sure that you have some special request upon your heart, some folks that you want to be praying for, somebody that's near eternity. You know, I was standing this week getting a tank of gas, and if you ever notice over these tents, or hundreds, whatever they is, I guess you got tents and hundreds. Man, I mean, they're just streaming through there. And there's a chill went over me, and I thought, dear God, that's about as fast as people are dying in this world. You, you go online, you Google the death clock, and just take a look and see how fast people are dying in the world we're living in. And I got a whole, and I thought, oh, my soul, oh, my soul. And so, folks, listen, let's pray for somebody and say, pray for that one. It is safe, falling the guilty distance again today. Let's ask God uh, to bless in our services, move on hearts and lives. And listen, precious souls hangs in the balance. So let's pray for them. A lot of folks are sick. Uh, you pray for Miss Tammy, you know, she's had the hip surgery this past week, and you pray for her and Brother Chris and all of those that involve that. And then, uh, if you would, uh, I'm scheduled for a little surgery tomorrow, so y'all just be praying about that. Would you do that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for loving us, being so good to us. Lord, I'm glad to tell you we can come to you, talk to you anytime, anywhere, about anything. And I'm, Father, I'm so grateful today that as we come today, uh, that you've given us this place wherein we can come and worship. And Father, I'm, I'm thankful for the people that you have sent this way. And Lord, I'm thankful for the Sunday school teachers that will be teaching and the singers that will be singing. And Lord, just for everyone that's made their way out today to worship. And I pray that you'll help us to have the spirit and the attitude of worship. And Father, we know that's not a natural thing. Lord, we know that it's spiritual. And you said that you were a spirit, and those that worship you must worship you in spirit and truth. So help us to get our spirit involved in spiritual worship today. Would you do that? Father, I trust today that you'll speak to heart, say so. Help those who cannot come today because of sicknesses, some getting over surgery, and different things. I pray, God, that you'll touch, help, and bless with them. And Lord, uh, we know today that uh, you're the only hope that we have. Uh, for our lives, you're the only hope that we have for our families, for our communities, for our country. And I pray that you'll touch, help, and bless in a great way. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning, everyone.
Jesus' authority over demons. It's found in Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. But as, a, as an opening, I wanted us to see Matthew 7, 29. For he taught them as one having authority. John 5, 26 and 27. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Verse 27 says, And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. 1 Peter 3, 22. Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Question, who has the most authority? I just read it to you. Jesus. Jesus has all the authority, not only over demons, but over everything. Anything ever created, everything created, Jesus has the authority over it. So, and we all know the, the, the power and the authority that Jesus has. And it should be of no surprise. But today, in today's lesson, yes, it's on the, uh, uh, the miracles, but it's also going to be on faith. We're going to see three different faiths in today's lesson. And uh, I'll go over that when we get to it. But Matthew 28 and 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Again, he has the authority, the power over everything, period. There is nothing that Jesus can't uh, fix. And before we get started, in, and it's a long lesson, and I, I, I hope we get done in time. We'll see if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. But uh, I'm going to try my best to get it all covered. But uh, for a little bit of background, in Mark chapter 9, uh, where is Jesus? Some of you Bible scholars, where is Jesus in Mark chapter 9? Everybody's looking. He was on the mountain. It was uh, Peter, James, and John were up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Okay? And we all know that Peter, James, and John are who? They're the inner circle, right? They're the closest ones to Jesus. Uh, I'm going to read Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. This is on the transfiguration. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. For he wist not what he say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly when they had looked around, looked round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Okay, that gives us a background of where Jesus and uh, Peter, James, and John were. So they are with Jesus, and that leaves the nine. The nine disciples are, uh, I'm not going to say by themselves, they are without Jesus. They are, uh, Jesus and the, and, and the three disciples, they, they had gotten away. So the crowd is around the nine. And this is the scene that Jesus, Peter, James, and John see when they come down off the mountain. As they're coming down off the mountain, they see the, the, the crowd, they see all the people gathered around 
the, uh, the nine disciples. And there's an argument going on. I'm getting a little ahead of the lesson, but there's an argument going on. And, well, let me, let me, let me just stop. I'll, uh, I'll get ahead of myself if I'm not careful. Let us begin in Mark chapter 9, verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. Again, uh, the great multitude. In Mark chapter 8, no, in Mark chapter 6, there were 5,000 fed. In Mark chapter 8, there was 4 more thousand fed. Okay, so there is, there's a great multitude. There's a big crowd. Everywhere Jesus goes, there's always a crowd. And why? People are nosy, right? Don't we all rubberneck when there's a wreck on the road? When something's going on, let a celebrity come to town. Man, the Coliseum's packed, right? People want to know. People want to see. People, uh, uh, maybe it's your favorite artist that's, that, that's in town and, and people want to go see him. Okay, but Jesus drew a crowd. He fed them not only physically but spiritually. And again, I'm getting ahead of myself before I get there. But uh, Mark 6 and 34 says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd and he began to teach them many things miracles and healings were going on people came from far and wide and I know we'll cover this verse many times today Mark chapter 6 verse 13 and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them uh, so you know if 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 you're sick, if you've got a child that's sick, if, if you had a need, you wanted to come see Jesus. So people came from far and wide, from all around, and they was part of this mass of people that uh, would come to, to see Jesus. And as oftentimes, uh, as we see throughout the scriptures, anytime there's a crowd, who else is there? Of course Satan's there, but he's there uh, with a particular group of people. He's there with the scribes and Pharisees because they are always watching. That's just like us out in the world. There's always someone watching us. Slip up one time, you're going to get told about it because they know that you're trying to, to walk the Christian walk. They know that you're trying your very best, and it's like they want to push your buttons just to see if they can make you crack. Many times I do crack. Why? Okay, but the scribes and Pharisees are just like this. The, the multitude is surrounded by Jesus, and there, there's an argument. Who's, who's leading this argument? The scribes. And again, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let me read verse 15. But... Uh, continuing 14, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. The people were greatly amazed. Why were they greatly amazed? They came to see Jesus, right? But yet they were greatly amazed. You think it had anything to do with verse 3? that I read just a moment ago before uh, on our, in our introduction where it said and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow as no fuller on earth can white them uh, he didn't get that with Clorox that was by God right Jesus' raiment was shining but I don't think so I don't think it was because of that. Because the last verse I read, uh, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man was risen from the dead. Okay, he, Jesus is not there to draw this crowd. You know what I'm saying? Jesus is not trying to draw attention to himself. He's spreading the gospel. He's teaching. He's preaching. Yeah, the crowds come. But he's not doing this to draw attention to himself. 
I think it's the very presence of the Son of God. Don't, I can't help but think uh, that Jesus, me and Tracy's talked about this a lot, had an aura around him. Just, don't you know that if, I think anyway, Gary, that if you was to get around him, you'd be drawn to him. The, the, the peace, the love, the, I don't know what other words to put in there, the wonderfulness of him uh, would just make you want to gravitate toward him, don't you think? I think so. So the people were excited. The people uh, ran up and greeted him. <clears throat> you know, maybe they were heartbroken and maybe they had seen that uh, what had happened with the other nine disciples and maybe they were let down. You know, maybe they had came a long way, well, I'm about to say drove, but maybe they had came a long ways just to see Jesus because they all knew, they had all heard, hey, Jesus can do it. Jesus can fix it. Jesus can heal them. Jesus can do whatever needs done. And maybe when they had gotten there and only seen the nine disciples, maybe they were disappointed. But then they look and here he comes. You know, they got happy. They come and greeted him and saluted him. That's what I think, okay? Again, right, they felt the love. <clears throat> But the people have seen and heard and knew about Jesus and what he had done. Verse 16. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? Uh, again, the scribes were the one leading the argument with the disciples. And look, we've had many lessons talking about these scribes and how they are. And I think the scribes were taunting the disciples. See, the disciples had tried, and again, uh, I'll get ahead of myself, but the disciples had tried to exercise this demon out of this, this young boy. And I think, you know, they failed. That's not what I'm thinking about, but they, they failed. They failed at exercising this demon. So I think the scribes are just taunting them, making fun of them, and and you know, just causing problems, just causing a stir, causing this big argument. Okay, that's what, uh, they're, they're just giving them a hard time about their inability to cast out this demon. Verse 17 and 18, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And whosoever he taketh him... And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. This demon has uh, made the boy deaf and dumb. And you know, okay, this is the father speaking to Jesus, and... This, this boy, is he needs relief. He needs something to be done. Uh, it's causing him to be self-destructive. And it's, it, it's, it's killing him. And I just want us to try to get a mental image of what's going on with this young man. Uh, Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. He foamish and gnashing, gnasheth at his teeth and pineth away. Okay, this... This young man is, is really being tore up by this demon. But I want us to change our focus from the young boy. I guess 95, maybe all of us, has had a child. None of us want to see our child hurt. None of us like to see him hurt or in pain or suffering. Imagine the anguish that this father has. For years, since this, since this boy was a child, we don't know how old he is. Let's just call him 10 years old. I mean, I mean, you know, this boy has had this demon in him. And every day, this demon torments this young child. And this daddy, and I'm sure, uh, again, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but this demon has cast him in the fire. He's cast him in the water. 
How many times has this daddy had to save his child's life? I mean, constantly. That's all he worries about. And I know we all worry about our kids, our grandkids, whatever the case may be. We're always worrying about it. This daddy is se severely worried because this demon is tearing him apart. And G uh, uh, this, this daddy, this father, he is seeking out Jesus for help. Okay, he's desperate. He really needs someone. And he came to the right place. Verse 19. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Who is Jesus saying this to? That's kind of harsh, ain't it? Who's Jesus talking to? All of them. He's talking to the crowd. He's talking to the Father. He's talking to the disciples. He's telling them all. You know, it sounds kind of harsh, but everyone there, and Jesus sounds frustrated <coughs> that there is so much uh, disbelief. And like I said, today we're going to see three types of faith in today's lesson. This is the first, the disciples' presumptuous faith. Uh, again, Mark 6 and 13, they had already cast out demons. What changed? Why didn't it work this time? It had worked before. It had worked in the past. Why is it not working now? What changed? I'll be honest with you. There's times where I don't pray right, where I don't study right, and I've, I've tried to get behind this sacred desk and preach or teach. And just absolutely have a, have a Curtis lesson. God wasn't in it none at all. Because I didn't, I didn't prepare. I didn't properly prepare. I didn't study. I didn't pray the way that I should have. I took God for granted. Well, I was just like, well, if I get up, you know, I only, only uh, halfway did something. Do you think maybe that's what the disciples did? We got this. We've done this before, right? They weren't prepared. Okay, we learn later that this is a stronger demon. You know, not all situations are the same. So, what happened? They failed. They utterly failed. And that just gives fuel to the scribes. That just helped them with their argument. That helped them to... Uh, spit in Jesus' face basically but they had gotten complacent and took the power of God for granted Jesus still had compassion over the boy there at the end of verse 19 he said how long shall I suffer you then he said what bring him unto me Jesus is going to fix it he has compassion on the children he has compassion on us this, and look, this is the answer, y'all. This is the answer to all of our, we've all got prayer requests for family, for friends, for lost loved ones. This is the answer. Bring them to me. Look, if we can bring them to church, if we can just get the gospel to them, whatever it takes, just bring them unto him. Bring them to me. Jesus said, bring them to me. That's what we got to do. Me and Tracy was talking about, and baby, I don't see no more, uh, those, those books on how to be saved. Okay, I'm looking for another one. If somebody's got a spare, I need it for her sister. But, you know, uh, I worry about them. I do. I worry about my son-in-law and my daughter. How much do I worry? I'm not witnessing to them like I should. I'm not begging them to come to church every Sunday. So what if they get mad? What's more important? They 
made a profession at one time. There's, but there's the answer. Jesus said, bring them to me. He said, bring the boy unto him. And he did. But we need to get your, try to get our family in church. We got to keep trying before it's eternally too late. Verse 20, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowing, wallowed, foaming. Why? Do you think that demon needed to be introduced to who was standing in front of him? That demon knew who was standing in front of him. He automatically went to, went to flopping around and foaming at the mouth. That demon, whoa, whoa, that's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He knew his time was drawing near. He knew that he's fixing to leave out from where he was living. He's fixing to get evicted. And automatically, hey, he's like, oh, this youngin, I feel sorry for this youngin. Hey, he went to flopping on the ground like a fish out of water foaming at the mouth. You know, he's already uh, stricken deaf and dumb. Kenny, that boy's in bad shape. That demon's trying, I think the demon's trying to kill this boy. But he can't. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Dope them up. Right. No. No. It's nothing supernatural. Right. Uh, according to the doctors, nothing supernatural happens. Just feed them a bunch of pills and make them be zombies. But the spirit tear him. Uh, that means to convulse. And I'm just trying to get you to see how violent this is. He's, the child is seizing, and wallowed means rolling. He's seizing and rolling on the ground, foaming at the mouth. And like I said, I think that, that, that demon's trying his best to kill him. But God, look, God's in control. You know, all through the years, while that demon's been in him, God was in control. God wouldn't let that boy die, Okay? Verse 21, and he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Why did Jesus ask this? Because you know he knew. So why did Jesus ask, how long has this demon been in this boy? So others could hear. Um, for the father and the crowd. You know, it's a seemingly impossible situation. And I'm sure the fathers, and uh, I'm, I'm fixing to get into that, but how do you think that father felt? You know, he comes, he brings his boy, and, hey, disciples, I need y'all to cast this demon out. I know y'all have done it before. You've done talked about it. You've done it before. Here, exercise this demon. My boy's going to die. And then they can't do it. Where, where'd his faith go? He's desperate now, Kenny. He don't, he don't know what to do now. Then here came Jesus. Right? <coughs> he knew that, but we're going to see. But the, uh, it's a seemingly possible situation. And every, he wanted ever like you're right, you're right, Gene. He wanted everybody to hear. This demon had been in here for years. Now, it's, everybody knows this is an impossible situation. Uh, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Hold on, I, I, I done jumped a verse. 22. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Okay, this is the second type of faith, the weak faith of a father. He says, if thou can do anything. Okay, like I said, his faith had already been weakened when the disciples couldn't do it. So now he's doubting. 
Now he don't know if Jesus can do it or not. If you can do it, have compassion and heal him. Help us. If you, yeah, if you can't. So this, this shows uh, this, the, the weak faith of the Father. Um, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, what's he do? He throws that if right back at him. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. It's not if Jesus can heal the boy. The if was the Father's ability to trust in God. If you have the faith, if you can believe that I can do it, it has nothing to do with the demon. It has nothing to do with the boy. It all has to do with the daddy. It all has to do with the father. Hey, daddies, what about us? Where's our faith? You know, maybe some things happen because of us, because of our lack of faith. Hello? You know, maybe that's the reason my daughter and son-in-law don't come to church. They've seen me outside of church. Mm. Y'all good people. Y'all don't. Mm. I must be worse than all of you. It was the Father's ability to trust in God, to have the faith that God can do anything. It's all about the one asking. Uh, and this, we start the third type of faith, the growing faith. Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Hey, we've all been there. All of us that are saved, we've all cried that out. Lord, help me. <coughs> yes, it is. That's where we live. Uh, and he, he, the, the father responded in tears. Lord, I believe, help me, help my, thou mine unbelief. Our faith is never perfect. You know, belief and unbelief live in the same place, right? Because our faith's not perfect. That's the reason we doubt every once in a while, right? Yes, we oftentimes get discouraged. Sometimes we wonder, God, are you even listening? We wonder that, don't we? It ain't just me. Come on, y'all. I hope it ain't just me. Yeah. All right, I'm hurrying. Verses 25 and 26. When Jesus saw that the people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Jesus wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. He seen the crowd coming real quick, and he, he goes ahead and tells that demon, get on up out of there. Get out of here. He, he, he evicted him right then. Verse 26. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. Okay, the boy is still seizing and thrashing and the demon cries out as it leaves the boy's body. Okay, he's, again, he's trying to kill him. Go ahead. Right. Yes, yes. The devil's pushing as hard as he can today, ain't he, Chris? Everywhere you turn, the devil's got his hand in it. Everywhere. Try to do something to see what happens. The devil's in it. The devil's going to try to trip you up any way he can. Just like with this young boy, the, the devil, I, I sincerely believe, is trying to kill this young man. Hey, I'll show him. I'm going to kill him before he can throw me out. You know, you've heard of people getting evicted from a house and just tear it all to pieces. Exactly. The power of Jesus was more than the power of the demon. He's more powerful than anything, than everything, okay? That demon didn't stand a chance. Not against Jesus. 
No matter how impossible it seems, Jesus had the power. Verses uh, 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 28 and 9. Or 7, 8 and 9. And Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. He, the boy wasn't dead. Verse 28 and 29. And when he was coming to the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. The, 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 the disciples, they were confused and defeated. Again, in uh, I think it was 613, they had already had authority over these unclean spirits and had cast them out. They had relied on self and not God. Matthew 17, 20 says, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith the grain of the side, uh, faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto the mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible to you. This was a stronger demon. It took uh, prayer and fasting. Right? It took, uh, it required, we, we, we need to demonstrate to God our determination, our willingness for something to happen before God will grant it. Right? A lot of times I'll just pray and if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. I didn't put forth enough effort I'm not willing okay maybe my daughter and son-in-law would get in church if I put forth more effort maybe if I prayed more maybe if I fasted more right maybe that's why we don't get our prayers answered we're not determined enough we don't put forth enough effort okay uh, next week Jesus heals on the Sabbath and again, uh, Brother Kelly will be teaching. Y'all pray for me. I'll be in West Virginia at Laurel Creek Baptist Church. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, for this lesson. And Lord, help me with my faith. Lord, help me to grow. Help me to have the third faith, Lord, the, the growing faith. Lord, I pray that you just touch each and every one of us. Lord, help me to be more determined. Lord, more dedicated. Lord, just give you more. Lord, you have blessed me so much. Lord, I, I, I thank you so much for everything you've done for me, to me, with me, dear God. I, dear Lord, where you brought me from to where you're taking me to, Lord, I thank you so much for dying on Calvary, Lord. But I thank you even more for raising up. Lord, for, for coming back. Lord, for giving me eternal life. Lord, I pray that you just help lead God and direct in the coming preaching hour. Lord, I pray that you help me this coming week. Lord, help me with my test in Hickory. Lord, be with our pastor as he has surgery. Lord, be with each and every one of us. Lead, guide, and direct. Lord, I thank you. I love you and I praise you. Lord, be with my daddy in West Virginia. Look after him. Amen.